After visiting the Amazon rainforest, travelers are often excited to share their impressions. Impenetrable thickets, giant trees, the rustling of unknown animals, and the fluttering of birds' wings. Complete wilderness for hundreds of kilometers around. People say it's like they've been to another world. But they don't have any idea that what they saw was a sort of natural reconstruction of what it was like in the Jurassic era. A similar climate and huge plants. The only thing is, in the Amazon, you can only meet three meter jaguars and that's if you're lucky. And in the Jurassic, the forests were filled with real monsters. Everyone knows about the formidable giants that roamed the Earth hundreds of millions of years ago from the Jurassic Park movie. By the end of the Jurassic, these dinosaurs had become extremely diverse. Some of these ancient reptiles resembled beings from other dimensions. What kind of living armored tanks made their way through the thicket looking for prey, breaking everything around? Those who made the Earth tremble when running like a column of heavy military equipment. And what kind of living periscopes could rise over the prehistoric waters of lagoons and lakes? You'll learn about it in our virtual tour of the ancient world of reptiles. Late Jurassic Dinosaurs. The late Jurassic is the third and final epoch of the period, lasting from 163.5 to 145 million years ago. The land at that time was nothing like in the Middle Jurassic. It formed two supercontinents instead of one. Pangaea, which was already coming apart at the seams, finally split into Laurasia in the planet's north and Gondwanda in the south. As a result, the Atlantic Ocean emerged, but it was still relatively narrow. On both continents, the climate remained very warm and humid, as in the modern tropics or subtropics. At the start of the late Jurassic, between 164 and 150 million years ago, the Earth warmed up again following a slight drop in temperature. The temperature reached the daily average of 30 degrees Celsius. The planet warmed up due to the greenhouse effect resulting from numerous volcanic eruptions. They filled the atmosphere with a huge amount of carbon dioxide. Even at that time, seasonal fluctuations on the planet became less extreme than at the start of the Jurassic. This was due to the expansion of the Central Atlantic and Western Indian Ocean. These huge water bodies made the climate on the entire planet more humid, reducing deserts to a minimum. At the end of the Jurassic, the temperature dropped by several degrees. The cooling began 150 million years ago and lasted until the early Crustaceous period. Thanks to the warm and moist climate, most lands were covered in thick vegetation all year round. The forests were full of cicades, ginkgos, and tree ferns. But in general, coniferous trees prevailed on the planet. Arocariaceae were the most common among coniferous plants and spread across both supercontinents. These gigantic evergreen trees were over 60 meters high. Their trunks were just humongous, and big heavy cones hung from the branches like magic giant's earrings. The pollen from these cones flew thousands of kilometers away, giving rise to new coniferous forests. Despite their gigantic size, Conifers were sometimes washed away by powerful water streams during seasonal floods. Many trees took root on the sandy mud flats where they found some fertile soil. In addition, they would often grow under layers of volcanic ash rich in mineral fertilizers. This is how coniferous trees quickly spread to new areas. The lush vegetation made animal life thrive even more compared to the Middle Jurassic. Forests and shores were teeming with various insects. In the lower Jurassic, their population grew larger than ever before. Numerous beetles spread far and wide, 
swarming under forest trees and near the water in the search of food. Predatory dragonflies, which already looked like modern ones, flew over the water looking for prey. They ate tiny midges, but were often hunted themselves by a lot of spiders. Some spiders were real giants like the ones you see in horror movies. One of the largest known fossil spiders with over five centimeter long legs was found in China. Besides insects, the condition of the Jurassic were favorable to almost all other biological species. And only amphibians continued to decline, giving way to reptiles. Contrary to this trend, salamanders became more populous and spread throughout the planet. In particular, giant salamanders who lived exclusively in water were one of the most conspicuous species. Some of these amphibians have survived to this day, reaching almost one and a half meters long. On the sides, these creatures have huge skin folds that increase body surface and improve oxygen absorption from the water. The warm waters of the late Jurassic were also inhabited by many fish. Bony fish quickly spread in the seas and fresh water. Some of them were truly gigantic, but no one could compete with Leedsichthys in terms of size. Scientists found the bones of individuals that were up to 30 meters long, which is bigger than a modern whale shark. But don't think that Leedsichthys devoured every marine creature that came their way just because they were that big. According to scientists, it was the size that played a cruel joke on huge fish. Being that big, the clumsy and unmaneuverable lead sickness couldn't be good hunters. Like modern whales and giant sharks, they fed on plankton, krill being the primary food source, which was abundant at the late Jurassic seas. Lead sickness caught krill by filtering the water through their gills. But the giants themselves also became easy prey for predators and perhaps had a terrible death. Paleontologists have found lead sick the scales bitten by pleosaurs. They believe that even a small sea reptile could easily snatch a piece of meat from such a fish. However, lead sick this were most likely much more tenacious than modern whales and were quite difficult to kill. Several days could pass before the sea giant would die and all this time, the predators gnawed at the prey while it was still alive. Thanks to the abundance of food in the Jurassic waters, pleosaurs quickly reproduced and became exceedingly diverse. New species of long-necked pleosaurs emerged in the late Jurassic. For example, Cryptocletes and Murenosaurs. Murenosaurus were approximately 5 to 15 meters long. Moreover, their long necks with 44 vertebrae accounted for half of this size. Their body was straight, and they heavily relied on plesiosaurs to survive in the cruel Jurassic world. The animals didn't need to raise their necks above the water, which made swimming easier. It was also more convenient for them to get close to the fish before feeling water pressure changes caused by large plesiosaurs. Sharp conical teeth made it easier for them to hunt prey especially bony fish and cephalopods. Life was thriving in the sky too. The first birds, Archaeopteryx, were about the size of a crow, lived in treetops. Instead of a beak, these unusual creatures had a pair of toothy jaws and freestanding fingers on their wings. Unlike modern birds, Archaeopteryx didn't yet flutter in the sky. Instead, they were clumsily gliding from branch to branch. Pterosaurs flew better than Archaeopteryx, and many species of these creatures soared high above the trees in the late Jurassic. Some of them resembled modern birds. If you went to the Jurassic and saw a tenacosmatoid pterosaur in the sky, you would mistake it for a duck or a wader. Among other things, they had similar wings in terms of shape and size. Pterosaur's flying style with frequent and powerful wing beats was probably similar to that of a waterfowl. Tenacosmatoids also had long wings and necks, straight jaws and needle-like teeth. They were aquatic or semi-aquatic pterosaurs that typically lived in coastal regions and near lakes. 
There, tenacosmatoids caught fish and other small animals they came across when looking for food. As for the land, all kinds of reptiles imaginable inhabited both continents of the late Jurassic. Big and small, herbivores and carnivores, as fast as modern antelope and as slow as hippos. Here are some of the most fascinating dinosaurs that lived on the planet 163.5 to 145 million years ago. The Allosaurus was considered a formidable hunter of the Jurassic period. On average, the predator was 8.5 meters and sometimes even up to 9.7 meters long and 3.5 meters high. The giants weighed over one and a half tons. It's also believed that there were much bigger individuals. This is evidenced by some reptile fragments found by paleontologists. These finds suggest that dinosaurs were up to 11 meters long and weighed over four tons. All Allosauruses had relatively large skulls with short but incredibly massive jaws. In 2005, mandibular modeling showed their bite force was more powerful than that of any modern animal. At the same time, scientists believe they held their prey not as tight as Tyrannosaurus. However, this hardly prevented Allosaurus from dominating among predators of the late Jurassic. Firstly, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, Tyrannosaurs emerged only in the Cretaceous period. Secondly, Allosaurus probably didn't rely that much on the bite force of their jaws. Like monitor lizards, they rather relied on flexible necks and sharp teeth in their struggle to survive. Special indentations on their teeth enabled Allosaurus to easily cut the bones of the prey. Torvosaurus was almost as impressive in terms of size and hunting potential. This name was coined by paleontologists to call large and sturdy bipedal predators that could grow up to 9 to 10 meters long. It's believed that Torvosaurus had short but very powerful arms. Most likely, nature has equipped its thumb with a huge claw. Paleontologists suggested that with massive skulls, strong teeth, and powerful, flexible bodies. These reptiles were perfectly adapted to ripping apart and dismembering large carcasses of herbivorous sauropods. Most likely, Torvosauruses were capable of cracking and eating their prey's bones. Next to such huge predators, Compsognathus seemed like miniature dwarfs. One of the smallest dinosaurs known, they were about the size of a chicken. However, they were a bit longer, about 60 to 90 centimeters. The dinosaurs' tails and necks also had different length. They weighed about 5.5 kilograms. For small animals, avoiding carnivorous Compsognathus was probably a smart move. Compared to other reptiles of that era, they were excellent hunters and fast runners. Compsognathus weren't massive. They had strong hind limbs and very small forelimbs. They caught reptiles and small living creatures, instantly tearing them apart with sharp teeth. Scientists speculate that Compsognathus could hunt in packs and pose a threat to larger prey. However, it's unlikely that even a huge flock of Compsognathus would be able to defeat a Stagosaurus, who looked like a super heavy armored tank. Like other sauropods, they were herbivores, so they didn't see other animals as a potential meal, but instead developed an excellent system of protection against predator attacks. These giants were up to nine meters long and weighed up to seven tons. Their backs flaunted thick bone plates. Paleontologists have long argued how the plates were positioned on the animal's back. So far, the scientific community established that they formed two rows. If that's true, the plates of one row grew opposite the gaps of the other row. Some scientists also believed that the plates were movable and could change their angles. The growths were believed to defend Stegosaurus from being attacked by larger predators. But the plates were too fragile and left the sides unprotected. This gave rise to a theory that they took part in thermal regulation like a Spinosaurus sail. 
or they were meant to attract a potential partner during mating season. Or perhaps Stegosaurus used them to scare and mislead predators. With red and bony plates filled with blood, these reptiles look bigger and certainly more formidable. However, the Stegosaurus also had more serious weapons. There were two pairs of threatening spikes on the monster's tails, each about a meter long. The spikes were quite efficient for self-defense. Other sauropods didn't have such massive weaponry, but their sheer size was enough to guard off predators. All these herbivorous dinosaurs are very similar. They all had columnar legs, long necks and tails, thick skin and small heads. However, each of them was unique in its own way, which enabled them to better adapt to the environment. For example, 15-meter Camarasaurus sauropods had unusually big nostrils. Scientists believe this kind of natural conditioning system was used by the reptiles to cool down the brain. But Camarasaurus's necks had only 12 vertebrae and were relatively short. They were just over 3 meters long. Another sauropod, the Diplodocus, had a longer neck with 15 vertebrae. Until now, researchers argue about how sauropods could live with such necks. It seems that different giants solved this issue in their own way. Most likely, Diplodocus held its neck at up to a 65-degree angle. This is evidenced by their powerful vertebrae that could serve as a sturdy column base. To put this in perspective, Brachiosauruses spent most of their time with their necks upright. On the contrary, the Sarmientosaurus that was found a few years ago in Argentina almost always kept its head close to the ground and looked like a giant vacuum cleaner when eating. But let's go back to our Diplodocus. Sharp keratinized spikes up to 18 centimeters high rose menacingly on their backs. These growths were probably used for self-protection. And of course, Diplodocus' superweapon was their uniquely long tails that had as many as 80 vertebrae. And yet, Diplodocuses lived in small herds to protect themselves even better. Some individuals in these herds were 32 meters long. Only Supersaurus could compete with Diplodocus in terms of size. Based on the found bones, some animals were 33 to 34 meters long and weighed over 40 tons, according to some estimates. However, only fragments of supersaurs have been found so far in the state of Colorado. This makes it difficult to accurately estimate their size. Can you imagine what modern mice would look like next to such behemoths? Unimpressingly minuscule. However, the Jurassic world had enough of those guys, and they were quite resilient. These mammals perfectly adapted to the environment thanks to their warm-bloodedness and newly emergent fur. Being protected from the cold and even sharp eyesight allowed them to hunt at night when large predators were inactive. During the day, they mostly hid in burrows in the forests and along the shores. One of the largest mammals of the late Jurassic was Castoracauda, a semi-aquatic Dacodonta genus. In fact, even these champions were tiny. They weighed just about 500 to 800 grams, and their tails were 425 millimeters long. The animals looked like modern otters, and their curved teeth closely resembled those of seals. Therefore, scientists assumed that Castrocotta mainly fed on fish, like otters and seals. At the same time, the animal's wide front paws, similar to those of platypuses, were perfectly adapted for digging and searching for food on land. These mammals were already partially covered with fur. These animal species, who were drastically different in size, habits, and food preferences, lived side by side in the Jurassic world. Let's imagine dense thickets of a tropical forest near a lake. Many different animal species used to live in this fertile corner of the planet. Let's imagine a huge brontosaurus eating food in the pond. Such reptiles were almost 22 meters long and weighed over 15 tons. But these giants had very small heads and brains. With a brain the size of a walnut, 
Brontosaurus certainly wasn't the brightest when it came to reaction speed and ingenuity. But it didn't need them. None of the inhabitants of those places would dare to attack such a monster. Brontosaurus could spend hours quietly standing on his thick, log-like legs in the lake, chewing on soft aquatic plants. Many reptiles were probably scurrying about in the thick ferns. It was a great lunch for the little Compsognathus. Fast dinosaurs were quite efficient at catching no less nimble reptiles and other small creatures. Entire herds of herbivorous dinosaurs may have gathered for lunch in the forest. Camarasaurus could easily find food in the forest's lower tier. Relatively short necks allowed them to eat leaves and young shoots at the bottom of giant trees. Unlike them, huge diplodocus-type sauropods must have been able to gnaw only at the treetops. They couldn't bend their insanely long necks far enough to reach the bottom. Like scissors, Diplodocus cut all the leaves and shoots they could reach. These giants needed to eat up to a ton of vegetation a day. When the food ran out, the herd of giants most likely left in search of a more suitable spot. Scientists know this from the pieces of rose quartz found in Jurassic deposits across all continents. Diplodocus swallowed the mineral to improve gastric function. Other sauropods used other minerals for better digestion. Interesting, herbivorous reptiles used a special herd pattern when traveling. Adult dinosaurs surrounded the young in a dense ring to protect them from predators. There were a lot of predators who didn't mind feasting on young strayed dinosaurs. In our forest, a hungry Tarbosaurus was watching one of the kids, thinking of a nice delicious meal. But young sauropods were constantly supervised by adults, so the attack would most likely result in the predator's injury or death. A herd of giants was quite capable of killing even a large enemy with powerful tails capable of knocking down trees. A predator dinosaur would hardly take such a risk. Rather, it would try to catch smaller prey, such as a Compsognathus. But this chicken-sized dinosaur was very fast and could easily escape. However, the Jurassic forests were so full of life that the Tarbosaurus wouldn't be hungry anyway. This predator always had a chance to catch some other slow animal. And at night, all the dinosaurs probably went to rest. Then mammals such as Uramaya could come out of their burrows looking for food. These small animals were similar to modern shrews and were about 70 to 100 millimeters long. Strong, wide teeth allowed animals to chew literally any plant food, including hard seeds and tree nuts. Before dawn, the Yaramaya would no doubt have eaten their share and darted back to a safe spot. They certainly didn't mean to encounter a large predator. This is how dinosaurs' days went in their favorite corner of the planet. The usual life of ancient reptiles and other animals on the planet was interrupted once more by the Jurassic Crustaceous extinction. It turned out to be relatively insignificant, wiping out about 20% of all living things on the planet. The extinction was caused by the tectonic plates sinking into the ocean. As a result, its waters became cold and extremely deep. This took a major toll on marine life, such as mollusks and corals. The few survivors moved to the shallow waters. Consequently, many food chains changed and affected other ecosystems. Giant sauropods partially disappeared. Stegosaurus and Diplodocus died out but their niche was quickly filled by new species. In the next period, the Crustaceous, dinosaurs reached their prime. There was probably not a single corner of the forest or the shore without these reptiles. It seemed that they would dominate the planet forever. But one single disaster wiped them all out. Stay tuned for the next episodes if you want to know exactly what happened.